Hey everybody, Dave Monahan here, Goods and Tools and Supplies, and once again it's time for another Tech Lab Tuesday. Today I want to talk about piston ring filing. It's something you all have to deal with in all your engine builds in today's technologically advanced society of engine building. And there's been many ways handed down over the years on how to uh, affect the dimension of the piston ring. Let, let's not forget there's an old school rule of thumb out there that says for every inch of bore, you need four thousandths of end gap. Now that rule's been around since probably 1950 or something like that. The ring gap today, you need to be listening to whoever you get your ring packs from, whether it's Total Seal or Hastings or whoever it might be. There is a guide in that ring pack that'll tell you what that gap should be according to that application. And it may change according to your own personal taste, according to that engine builds recipe. Whether it's a big inch motor, big cam motor, whether it's a blower motor, you're gonna make different decisions contacting who you're getting those ring pack from to make sure you get the proper ring gap on those applications. So, but I've digressed a little bit. There's a variety of different ways to uh, affect the dimension of a, of a piston ring gap. And that's what we're talking about right here, this dimension between here and here. Heck, back in the day, we could use a file. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend this in today's world at all. Honka, 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 there you are, filing away on a, eight hundred a thousand dollars set of piston rings no we won't do that if you have the occasional piston ring demand in your shop usually for your single dual cylinder uh, air cooled type of engines you can use uh, our prf uh, 250 this little guy right here and it uses an abrasive wheel and these stops and with hand rotation you're able to affect the dimension of that ring gap. We also put another feature, and actually I did many years ago, I said, well, what else can this thing do while it's spinning around and around grinding piston ring material? At that time, we were in the go-kart business, the very small displacement uh, racing where they had Hondas and, and Briggs and Strattons and Tecumsehs out there, both in a junior dragster and a go-kart application. So I put this little V-gap in here so you can stem height that valve. So. And my competition followed that as well. So it became a universal. These are available from us and other sources. And guess what? They all got that little beat gap in now. So you're welcome. The other one is one we've been seeing for many, many years, and that's the PRF 500, this guy over here. We put a diamond wheel with it, but it works on the same principle. It's your hand pressure, squeezing the rings together, rotating this handle, and using the diamond abrasive on that wheel to affect that gap dimension. When the grinding's done, you've got to stick it into your shoulders, you've got to get your feeler gauges out, and you have to actually measure that gap. Even though you are uh, you may accurately remove it with a file, the PRF 250 or even the PRF 500, you can't guess. You've heard me say a million times, and I'm gonna say it again. If you're not measuring, you're just guessing. Don't ever forget that. So, pop the ring down inside the bore, make sure it's squared up with a squaring tool. Some people will use a piston upside down to go into the cylinder bore. That helps square that piston ring. Then measure that ring gap accordingly. You're doing your job, you're being responsible, true to your school and your valued customer as well. So there's lots of manual ways to deal with ring gap. We came up with a, a process, we worked with a, a, a quite a clever gentleman uh, named Gene way back in 2002 is when this project started. We released this piston ring filer, our PRF 812 to the marketplace in 2003. Didn't have this deburring wheel on it, didn't have these lighted on and off switches, didn't have these protectors. We've made quite a few improvements over the years in working with Gene. So proud to, to say that Goodson delivered uh, an affordable, accurate piston ring filer as far back as 2003. They're made right up here in Winona, Minnesota. And uh, uh, got that American flag waving on it. So let me tell you a little bit about this. Uh, this is the current model you can get from us, our PRF 812DW. The DW means it comes with the deburring, deburring, the deburring wheel right here on this side. And that allows us to get rid of that stalactite or stalagmite that forms during the filing or grinding process because we want to knock that off. Another way to knock that off, I'm going to interrupt myself here, we make this abrasive stick that you can use to 
take that spur off. So if you're doing a lot of piston rings, I do highly recommend that you go ahead and order the PRF 812DW because it will come with that deburring wheel already built in. However, you can buy it as a PRF 812 without that deburring wheel. Save yourself some dollars in that regard. Both units, however you uh, acquire it, give you a capacity of two and a half to five inch. We guarantee repeatable accuracy with this thing. It's got a stainless steel table, so there's no corrosion factors to work on. Uh, we've even incorporated a diamond dressing tool. This is one of the innovations we came up with because we don't just buy an off-the-shelf uh, welder's cutoff wheel to do our grinding. We have these, uh, these grinding wheels specially made. Two and a half inch in diameter for our early model, three inch diameter for the current model. But it's it's got woven material on the inside. I've even had a couple of top fuel teams call me up and say, hey Dave, what's going on? We're not wearing this wheel out. Are we doing something wrong? I said, no, enjoy the, the long life. That's what you get when you do business with goods and tools and supplies. I'm getting away from the actual thing of uh, informing you and we're going to get a demonstration on actually make some sparks with this piston ring grinder. So to that effect, there's a couple of uh, ways that we want to dress that grinding. Well, that's why we incorporated this diamond. I got off a little bit on track here, but this diamond dressing tool works just like on your valve refacer, or your plywood grinder, or your crankshaft grinder. We need that to dress this wheel because, and I'll show you here in a minute. Some operators plunge grind. They just come right in, and then from that point on, they dial in material until they hit whatever spec it is, and they're off. I, however, was brought up to stroke grind, where I want to actually pivot that table back and forth so I get a good consistency, uh, less chance of a stalactite or stalactite growing, and I just think it's a better way. Plus, the real benefit and takeaway I want you to have is you'll do a more consistent wear on that grind. If you plunge grind, you're probably gonna put a groove in it and therefore have more requirements to use that diamond dressing tool. Uh, it's a ball bearing motor, it's very balanced. We include a, a, a thousandths uh, indicator, 0.01 thousandths indicator right here. We've got special dust boots to protect the mechanism of the indicator itself. Your in-feed knurled knob over here tells you how to zero the indicator and then of course how much material you're removing. We've got a lighter rocker switch up here because this motor runs so quiet, sometimes you don't even know it's on. It's on right now. We know because the, the light is on. So just another safety precaution that we've incorporated into this machine to deliver a higher value to do, you, the professional engine builder. So I've kind of gone into the nuts and bolts of it here uh, long enough. Let me show you exactly how this tool works. It's very straightforward. It's, it, it's, it's completely uh, operator friendly. And we've even incorporated this uh, squaring plate. What this happens here is it's gonna lock out that table from pivoting, so there's no way I can crash it into the grinding wheel. But I also will use it to square against the original uh, parting line that the manufacturer put in here. And that's accomplished quite simply. Uh, we just rotate this over, get that under here, and move that that squares up against this plate right here. They might say, well, Dave, what's this knob for? But that way we can adjust for different diameters. A two and a half inch will have a smaller circle than you can imagine a five inch would. So we want to catch that radius. So when I put the next ring and the next ring and the next ring after that, I'm, I'm totally locating in the exact same place. So I line that up so I don't have any air gap. I move my, my radius adjustment knob, lock it down, put my clamp down, remove this back, and now I've got full pivot point on that, uh, on that uh, table. It allows me to make contact with that point. So then I want to I zero the, the dial indicator. So I'll come right on up here, creep up on it, make sure I hit zero, adjust my indicator accordingly so that I am at zero, and know that I'm ready to go ahead and start grinding. Now, I'll go ahead and turn this on. Safety first, make sure you got safety glasses or a face shield on at all times. There's a little, uh, some dust associated with uh, a piston ring grinding. Not too much, but be aware that there is dust in the equation. So I'm going to go ahead and dial in uh, 5 thousandths here. I'll just take a slight cut on here at 5 thousandths. I'm locked down everywhere. My light is on. I know it's running. And I'll just push this down on the full stroke. about 5,000, but I wasn't done yet. I want to go ahead and take a few more. So I'm going to go ahead and go up to 
to a zero point, and we should be just barely touching off on that. And we are. So now I can take five. On that one, I can go up again to ten. And it's real simple. I just keep rinsing and repeat, rinsing and repeat, rinsing and repeat. As, like I mentioned earlier, some people will go ahead and drive this in here and then dial in their five thousand on the plunge gun. I prefer the sweep thing. I think it makes it easier all the way around. As I mentioned, this wheel will wear. Sometimes it'll wear irregularly because piston rings will be of different hardnesses. We might end up with a groove in there, and that's okay. It's part of the process. So we just slide that out of the way, and that's where this diamond also comes in. Coming right in there. So we'll just line that up at the edge of that table so it's nice and square. Back off your set in your dial indicator so you can see you yes, you know, it's got that diamond moved over there a little bit right now. So make sure I'm getting close on that which I am. Turn this back on. This is all locked down. I'm not really worried where my dial indicator is at this point, so I'm gonna dress that grinding wheel. So let's go. I'm generally feeding it about one or two thousandths per pass. Is a good is a good uh, approach to yeah. so that allows us to that completely allows us this diamond tool to dress this grinding wheel true once again uh, eliminating any any slag or build up and they will build up like a, a, any abrasive wheel uh, does we have to dress that in a way plus we want the wheel to be true as well uh, with that done and out of the way come back over here to this deferring wheel. And that's where I can just quickly do a quick kiss here, do a quick kiss there. I can take that stalactite, stalagmite, whatever you want to call it, right off of that edge quickly and easily. As I mentioned before, this piston ring filer comes in two different versions. PRF812 without the debris wheel, PRF812DW with the dirty, the, 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 back to that again, that's the second time I screwed up, the burring wheel. With or without the burring wheel, save yourself some money if you want to deburr by hand with one of our dressing sticks. Uh, <laughs> let's not use a file in this equation if we can. Wait, I don't want to get away from you yet. Uh, you guys have been watching a lot of these videos and I want to personally say thank you. We're having a lot of fun putting them together. Uh, we wicked it up a little bit per your request. And by watching this video today, if you do order one of our PRF812 or a PRF812DW, tell my order desk you saw this video. We're gonna throw in a, a free cover that fits right over that to protect it. I mean, you've got a good investment here. Good investments require protection. And we came up with these uh, machine tool uh, covers several years ago for valve refacers, piston ring filers, uh, uh, spring testers, things of that nature, just to help you guys protect your equipment out there. So again, if you got any questions, catch us at 1-800-533-8010 or catch us on the web at Goodson.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.